Hello comrades, and today we'll be talking about the differences between the capitalist and the socialist mode of production. Let us define what production is first. Production is the creation of materials and goods which can be used to either create other materials or goods or can be used as consumer goods right away. These were made out of raw materials or materials which were made earlier. Secondarily, let's see how such a production system works. We can imagine it as a tree-like structure. At the bottom, we will find the fundamental element for any production, the raw materials, like metal ores, chemicals found in nature, land needed to grow crops on, or to pasture animals on, etc. The higher we look, the more sophisticated products we will encounter. With other words, the production of goods of higher quality is dependent on the production of the lower level goods. Now let's look at how the capitalists handle this type of system. The capitalist sees the relation between the high and low quality goods and tries to appropriate as much of the production system as possible. In doing so, the capitalist makes others depend on the part of the production system owned by him or her and generate profits for the owner. The capitalist cannot produce anything on his or her own, so the workers, who by the way do not own any part of the production system, need to be employed. This way there are thousands of people who produce something, but there are only a few who have the power to bring changes within the system. It is called privatization. The capitalists are fracturing the enormous system of production of goods into small parts owned by individuals who can do whatever they want in order to make profits. Let's see how the socialists handle the very same production system. Instead of cutting it into parts and trying to make others depend on the goodwill of the wealthy owners, the workers will seize the control over not just a fragment, but over the whole system of production. This means that there is no drift towards production for profit, and thus no exploitation of workers. The workers work to make sure everyone, be it on the local or national scale, gets the products of their labor in exchange for an equal amount of labor. Those who do not want to exercise the needed amount of labor will be rewarded less, this is needed to eradicate uncompetitive and opportunistic people from the socialist society. It does not mean, however, that the handicapped people, for example, will automatically receive less because they don't have the same physical abilities as the non-handicapped. In fact, there are multiple countries right now which tried to start employment programs for the handicapped, and the majority of those were quite successful. If we also consider the fact that the workers on the socialist system either keep the profits for the collective that is responsible for production of certain goods or materials, or the profits are shared between the workers based on their needs, we'll be able to understand why the quality of life in socialist countries was, is and always will be way higher than before the revolution and on par with if not higher than that of the capitalist countries. So how can we obtain the thing that we, the Westerners, consider an utopia? There is, at least now, no real vanguard party of organized workers thanks to the anti-socialist propaganda from both the United States and the European Union. So for now we need to organize neighborhoods, farmers, clerks, and each other type of worker into a union of workers. We must stand up and create co-ops of workers to bring true democracy to the workplaces. We must stop our overproduction and focus on what the people really need. We need to stop the constant chase of the profit and start up solidarity funds for those who need it. We need to stop the constant discrimination based on color, sex, status, etc. Stop exploiting the global south for resources. Stop to repress the working class and offer investments which will help countries grow 
abolish the discrimination and exploitation that grew on us because of Western propaganda and finally become humane. This is all I have for today, comrades. Thanks for listening and we will see each other very soon.